In this lesson, we're going to talk about some of the five-axis toolpath control techniques that you have available to you. So let's start by looking at the first toolpath we did, which was a simple swarf going around these upper tapered faces. So I'm going to right-click on top of that operation. We'll go into Edit. And what I want to do is take multiple steps going down along that face. So we're going to go to Passes, and under Cutting Mode, instead of a single pass, we're going to take multiple passes from the top. When we do that, it opens up the parameter down here that says maximum step down. Here it's set to 40 thousandths. I'm going to tell it that we want to take steps of 100 thousandths per pass. So now it's stepping down along that edge at 100 thousandths per pass and cutting around. But if it's cutting with the side of the tool, why would we need to do that? Well, you might not be using a flat bottom tool like this. Let me right click over this operation and go back into Edit. Let's say that for our tool, we want to select a different kind of tool. So I'll adjust my tool filter here to tell it that we're also looking for ball mills, and we'll OK that. Now I'm going to grab this 3 quarter inch ball end mill. Now we're going to OK this, and now we would be stepping down along that ball, cleaning up that edge. Now because of the way we're stepping and the type of tool, we're still going to be eventually cutting up the side of the tool, and that might be okay. That might be what we want. I'm going to right click and go to Edit. So I'll go to Passes, and we'll tell it that we want to adjust our tool a little bit. Now there's an option here that says Sideways Tilt, and it's set to zero degrees. Now you would think that if you're doing a swarf cut with the side of the tool laying against this face, why would you need to tilt it? Well, why you need to tilt it might be up to you. It might depend on the kind of part you're doing and the kind of tool you have and the kind of cut that you need to take. We're going to change this sideways tilt to 15 degrees. Enter that. And now you can see the tool is tilted so it's not at the same angle as this face anymore. If we go to Simulate, you'll be able to see that better. You can see the further down it gets that there's more air or a gap between the edge of the tool and the edge of the part. So now we're cutting with the circumference of the ball. So that was taking multiple steps down along that face with the side of the tool tilted up and away from that face. Let me right click on this again. We'll go back into edit mode. So we were taking individual steps. Let's go back to our passes, and instead of having it take multiple steps from the top, let's have it take a spiral cut. A spiral will give you a continuous cut going around that surface. OK that. So now it never has to come off of that part. It's doing a continuous cut, stepping down and around that profile. So those are some really interesting control techniques that you have available to you. Let's go down to this swarf toolpath that we did, where we were side cutting this lower section. I'm going to right click on this and go into Edit. And we'll do some of those same changes. We'll tell it that for our passes, that we want to do a toolpath from the top. I'm going to have it step down 100 thousandths per cut. And I'm going to tilt my tool up at that 15 degrees again. And we'll OK that. So as it's going around, it comes to this open edge here, and it follows up along that edge and then continues down around the other side. Well, That means every time it makes a pass, it's going to cut up along that same edge. It's going to be recutting this edge every time, and you may not want that. Let's go back into our parameters and say Edit. Go back to our passes, and this time we'll tell it that we want to trim that toolpath and I want to trim that toolpath starting from the top. OK that. Now instead of following up along that edge, it's going to do a retract to avoid this big opening. So it will pull off the face, come up, over, down, and then lead onto the face again and then cut around. All these little green arcs are showing you the lead on moves and lead off moves for that cut. Well, maybe we know that this whole area is open. There's nothing in the way here. There's no reason to come up and over 
but I do want it to wrap it in between these open-ended cuts. Let's go back into our toolpath again, say edit. So on our linking tab, we have a parameter here that says maximum stay down distance. So this is a gap that it's looking for. It's the maximum gap to determine whether it should retract or whether it should stay down. Now the value here is two and a half inches. Now I know that the whole part is only six inches across. So I'm gonna set this to five inches. So that means if the gap is five inches or smaller, it should stay down. So now it cuts around the profile. When it gets to this open area, it leads off, rapids over, leads on, and then does the next cut going around. Let's go back again and take a look at some of these parameters. Let's take a look at passes and under cutting mode, this time we're gonna do trim from bottom. Okay, this. And now we have some rapid moves that come off the part as each one of these profiles reaches its endpoint. Do a quick zoom along here so that you could see those a little bit better. And to zoom back and fit the screen, I can double click the wheel on my mouse. Another thing to be aware of when you're doing a five axis swarf toolpath is that when you're picking these edges, the tool will come exactly to that edge. So for this particular toolpath, it looks like it's off to the side and above that edge. Let's go to a straight view for the side of the part here. And you can see how it looks like this toolpath is actually above the edge that we're cutting. Let's take a look at that and simulate. And here you can see that the actual edge of the tool is right on that edge of the surface. So what we're seeing here with this blue line is actually where the tool is being driven from the center of the tool. And because it's tilted up, it gives us the illusion that it's not on that edge. But that's not what I want to talk about. What I want to talk about is that in a case like this, there's nothing below that edge that I have to worry about hitting. So I can actually cut past the edge. So let me go back into that toolpath. We're going to go to our Passes tab, and here we have a parameter that says Tool Offset. Now this will offset the tool out by a distance. So we can offset the bottom of the tool to cut past the edge that we actually told it to machine. Now I'm going to exaggerate this, and I'm going to set this to a distance of about a half inch. And now you can see it's way past that edge. If we run this again and simulate, you'll see how far that tool is past the bottom edge that we told it to machine. So that gives you an idea of some of the toolpath control that you have available to you using the Swarf toolpath.